when we think about the ancient world, often the first thing we think about is the Roman Empire and the ancient Greeks. Um, those are the civilizations that we're most likely to have come across in everyday culture, in school, in things like Percy Jackson. Um, and those are the two civilizations that speak Latin and ancient Greek. Um, however, languages in the ancient world is, a, is much more nuanced than that. Uh, and it's not just these two languages. Even within ancient Greek, mm -hmm. you end up having lots of variation as well. Yeah, so we have a lot of evidence for um, different languages and how they were used. Um, so obviously we have, you know, like our textual traditions, so things like um, the Greek and Latin, um, like texts that we read, so Greek tragedy, things like that. Um, but we also have really importantly inscriptions, which are a really important source for learning about language because we find them in the places, um, like in different areas and different geographical locations, that means that we can connect that type of language to those places. And um, what's really interesting about these inscriptions is that they can sometimes contain more than one language and that can tell us a lot about um, what languages were being used and which languages were more important in certain places. It's actually quite common in the Roman world for elite Roman men to know both Latin and Greek. Um, that's a product of the fact that Roman culture is hugely influenced by ancient Greek culture. However, we don't actually get a lot of literary evidence um, showing Roman men writing in Greek. So we have to rely on a different sort of evidence for that information. So we rely on inscriptions for that, and inscriptions are basically slightly more formal, normally like administrative texts um, that are set up in certain places. They might be on slabs of marble, for instance. Um, they could be on statues, um, like saying who made the statue, what it was for. Um, and you get examples of these from things like funerary texts to thank you, um, like inscriptions for emperors and for rulers for setting something up so there's like a lot of different things they're used for but they often tend to be more formal and more administrative in nature than um, our like literary texts and we use those today so think about the writing that's put on gravestones nowadays that's an inscription so we actually have kind of taken that practice straight from the ancient world which is quite cool um but inscriptions are also really interesting because they tell us about a slightly different um, linguistic trope that occurs in the Roman period because the Roman Empire was massive and at its height it actually spanned three continents um, and in order to become that large they had to conquer and subjugate loads of different people um, and one of the ways in which they tried to kind of unify their control over that larger distance was to impose Latin on subjugated peoples uh, so they forced um, the people that they had conquered to learn Latin in order to become a part of the empire um, and that creates a really interesting and complex um, kind of interwoven linguistic situation um, and one of the ways we can tell this is through bilingual inscriptions with Latin and other other languages uh, so an example of this is a inscription we have from Lepcus Magna which is in is on the coast of North Africa in Tunisia which was originally a, Carth a, a Carthaginian town um, who were a people who lived in Africa um, and they spoke a language called Punic and so when they were conquered um, the Romans imposed Latin onto them um, and so we end up having some examples of bilingual inscriptions with Latin and Punic on them for example we have one from AD 1 to 2 in their um, theatre which was built by a Punic person, which is an interesting um, thing to think about. Um, and I think also what's really interesting to think about um, when we're thinking about other languages that aren't just Latin and Greek is that there were other parts of the ancient world that we don't always consider that were using very different languages to Latin and Greek and also different ways of writing those languages. So um, in the Near East, which is what we kind of term, it's the ancient term for the modern Middle East, um, essentially, which is Iran, Iraq, Syria, those areas, um, they, were, they had a lot of different languages there, not just languages that were connected to Latin and Greek, but also ones that were connected to Semitic languages as well. So we have examples from there, like Akkadian is um, an example of a language spoken in that area, and also um, Ugaritic, other, um, other, and there's other types of languages used in these areas as well. Um, and they use a form of writing called cuneiform, which is just a fancy way of saying like 
wedge shape writing basically which is imprinted on clay tablets um, and what's really interesting about these is that unlike um, kind of the inscriptions and the literary traditions in other um, cultures and particularly in Greek and Latin cultures um, we have a lot of these clay tablets and they seem to cover a lot of different things so they cover things from myth to um, like drinking contracts to um, just kind of admin things so these clay tablets are used for everything and it's not just like they have separate inscriptions and separate things for that um, but yeah, they would have used these languages um, in you know different places, and we know that they also use multiple languages even within these places. So in ancient Ugaric, for instance, um, they spoke Ugaritic as their main language, but we have examples of them writing Akkadian and other um, Near Eastern languages as well. I think th it's interesting to think about this question in terms of why do we immediately, when we think of the ancient world, think about Latin and Greek? Um, what is it about our culture that makes us have these as the default when there are so many other languages uh, from the ancient world that are actually like far older than ancient Greek that we just don't really consider and probably like I haven't heard of a lot of them. Yeah, so things like Akkadian go back like centuries um, that was used from about 2500 BC. Ugaritic again, uh, 14th to 12th century BC. So really, really old languages writing uh, things way before the Greeks and the Romans did.